Hey guys, first official video coming from the new shop. We are currently working on the buggy. Uh, have a couple issues to figure out, but check out our social media pages. That's where we post more of that behind the scenes type stuff right now. But this video I want to make because a lot of people are making videos about tools and what tools to carry on the trail and harbor freight ideas. I attack it a little bit different coming from a, a mechanics background. So as you see in the video, which I'll put here real quick, that is our get the get that bar bar, which is this thing here. And this, normally one of the big problems we have in buggies is where can we put a good bar? Well, they they solved that issue and it's ingenious and it's out of sight, out of mind until you need it. Our other trick that we have is how we carry spare fluids. As you see, we made the mount, not the most beautiful mount, but it's one of those things when I believe in function over form. I'd rather it function really well and not totally look horrible, but it works really well. We've been all over Sand Hollow, all over East Coast trails with that setup, and it's only got one pin in it. When you need fluid, or say your buggy's kind of flopped over and leaking something and you need fluid, you don't have to worry about fumbling through stuff. It's one pin, the whole thing comes out, you can set it on the ground, get the fluid you want. Third thing is I always keep a vice grip somewhere in the buggy for the simple reason is if you break a brake line or break something, you can tighten it real quick, but also if you break a brake line, you can pinch it off and carry on and then fix it not in the worst place possible. And so I just buy cheap Harbor Freight, not the super cheap ones, because you want some bite if you want to take something off, but the middle of the road ones, um, like I'm not sure what company they have now, I, either Quinn or uh, Doyle probably has a good set of vice grips. So they're not terribly expensive, and if you lose them, so be it. As you saw in the bag, I will put here, this is what's in there. This is more than a basic first aid kit. This is stuff that could actually save somebody's life. You never know, we're out in the woods. You could quickly get them stable until help arrives. You've got gloves, CPR mask, burn kit, another burn kit, eye wash, sterile wipes, cuts and scrapes, extra tape, and a tourniquet, and time. You write the time on there. So, this is something that I think every everybody should take a course on and have because this could save your buddy's life if you come down to it. So set yourself up with a good trauma kit, not first aid. This is trauma. First aid kit's good when you cut your finger, but if you get a stick into you, and you're bleeding or you burn yourself on your exhaust really bad or any of that or god forbid if your buggy catches on fire and you get burnt this is the stuff that will stabilize them until help arrives um on to the tool section i carry in my pouch kangaroo pouch that's on a prp seat underneath your legs, I carry a few things. A Phillips head screwdriver because my throttle, 
adjustment screw always likes to move. I'm trying to figure that out now as we speak, but it's easy to get to. I carry this wrench right here is a 9 16 and a half inch. Mostly I use the 9 16 but this wrench is the best drive shaft U-bolt wrench I have ever used. And I carry one in my bag and I carry one in my kangaroo pouch. I also carry a kind of a cheaper style Jacko, I think products it's called. It's from Amazon. It's a uh, zero to 15 PSI tire gauge. If for some reason I need to check air pressure or something, it's right there, easy to get to. If somebody else needs to check air pressure, I usually wheel with a lot of guys that uh, drive their rigs. So it's right there. Main problem, this came in handy last trip out. I put a little cap on there so you don't stab through your bag or stab yourself. This is just a cheap Harbor Freight test light. And this here is one of the most go-to tools when you hit a rock and really hard and vehicle shuts off. I've seen that in two Jeeps. Every past two weekends we've had Jeeps that blew a fuse from hitting a rock too hard. Um, coming down on it basically. Fuel pump issues. So this is a very good used tool. And I carry a adjustable AN wrench. And this, since we have dash 16 hoses on our steering and our uh, coolant, this is really awesome because it goes really big and it's made out of aluminum and it really doesn't mar up much of the aluminum because it's aluminum on aluminum so that's that then we've been trying out a lot of bags this one's pretty cool um basically you can unvelcro that and take just that i normally don't do that but you have a big pouch here and mostly i keep zip ties in there and then sockets here and this is my gripe about how I see it all the time. People buy toolboxes and have all these tools and everything else. Well, I'm a firm believer in light and simple. I only carry what tools this buggy is. And if you go back and watch that video on the end of uh, one of the mammoth videos before we head out west, you'll see me removing the trans. I actually moved, removed it right outside of here because the garage wasn't ready yet. Well, when we moved here, all my tools were buried in a corner. Well, I had this with me, and I removed the whole trans out of this buggy with just this one bag. So I'll just go through it real quick. This is an El Cheapo. Harbor Freight thin. I mean, if I break it, I'd probably buy a new one or it's probably warranty. I really don't use this to break a lot of stuff loose on the quarter inch side, but the half, um, three eighths side, I break stuff apart. Um, and it's been pretty good. I can't complain with that. I do carry a gear wrench flex head that comes in handy and inch and 516 socket for ball joint nuts and inch and eighth for I believe it's my steering ram uh, is inch and eighth uh, nuts for the tie rods um, I carry two different extensions for my flip socket so I can, that's just a Harbor Freight flip socket. And these are really helpful. Um, I carry a special socket for my lug nuts, which here it is. These are Harbor Freight Pittsburgh cheap, but they wobble and they don't really come off that easily. 
So this is like for my spark plugs if I need it. And I have a shorter one in there. And if you push it all the way, oh, I just lied. Oh, there we go. Like it's mostly stable. And I'm not gonna go through the whole bag, but I'll just tell you basically, my buggy's an LS, so a lot of the bolts are metric on it. Like uh, the valve covers and stuff, I carry a 10 millimeter for those, uh, 5 sixteenths or eight millimeter for that kind of stuff. Um, I carry 17 because there's a lot of 17s. And so let's go on to the next one. And same thing with this, why I don't believe in just going to Harbor Freight and buying tools. You can go online to like eBay or scratch and dent section of Amazon warehouse and you can find what I have in here. Of course, go through your buggy, vehicle, whatever, and find out what exactly fits yours. But what I like to do is I like to have double-ended wrenches. Maybe break it free with the socket first, and then you have double-ended wrenches. So now you're only carrying one wrench instead of trying to fit a one-inch wrench or a 15, 16 wrench that's like this long somewhere in your buggy. So you can pick up these. These are nothing, this one's nothing special. It says made in USA, but it's uh, just cheap and it works. And this one, same thing. Oh, this one's an SK. I probably bought at like a flea market. That's another good place that you can find stuff. And I have a ton of double-ended wrenches. This one here is a little bit long. It's one inch and 15 sixteenths. Um, and this one is a proto that I literally bought off of eBay for like, I don't know, five bucks. And this is for my links. Um, and then you just keep on going through regular three quarters, a shorty 19. Never know when you're going to need that. This here is actually out of my toolbox and I need to buy another one. This is a one inch for my orbital. Uh, you can't get in there to tighten the bolt with this so this shorty one inch wrench is for that again the stuff that is for my vehicle and more this one's five eighths and three quarters and you just keep on going through 15 millimeter and another half uh, half inch to nine sixteenths another half inch to nine sixteenths because you could always use more uh, 3 8 and 7 16 and the other nice thing about buying somewhat quality tools used on eBay you can get 6 point instead of 12 point and this one's an SK 3 8 7 16 I'm not gonna go through all these but you get the gist and this bag is super nice because it does fit the longer wrenches um, on the pliers like I said I have a pair of vice grip tannin these are a little bit more expensive. I like these Milwaukee ones because it has what's called a torque lock. So if you get in a situation where you don't have enough, enough force behind it, uh, you don't have enough force behind it, you can tighten it with a screwdriver or something and really crank down and you could take really damaged bolts that have been bouncing off the rocks that you probably long time ago said hey I'm gonna replace that bolt well now you have to get to that bolt and it's no size will ever fit it so that's why you carry a good pair of vice grips um, these tools this thing here I bought on JD Co it's uh, I think North Jersey or Jersey tool company guy he's on Facebook he has a bunch of good tool deals too if you're looking for tool for your shop but these are basically needle noses wire strippers cutters I never use these bolt cutter things and a crimper on the end and a pinch these are one of those tools again you have a quality set and these aren't that expensive I think they're under 20 bucks you have a quality set that does multiple tools in one. That is the key here. Another thing, 
This is one of my favorite tools, and I preach to everybody you should buy one. This one is super old, as you can tell. And I've bent it and re-straightened it and everything else. It's called an auto wrench by Crescent or a mechanics wrench. And when you need to tighten the link bolt or link jam nuts, I'm not really sure how big this goes. I don't think I have a tape measure here. But as you can tell, that is plenty big enough. But I'll grab a tape measure real quick. So, the overall length is just 11 inches. The opening width is almost three inches. So again, tools that are tight and compact, but can do multiple functions. Um, I carry a pair of snapper and pliers, um, a decent side cutter dykes, whatever you want to call these things. These are Quint from, or Quinn from Harbor Freight. They're pretty decent. Um, this is what I was looking for before because um, it didn't go back in the spot it is. I carry a punch so I can tighten stuff or punch bolts out, but we'll get to that later. I do carry a small devil's foot, toe, whatever you want to call it. This one here. This is mostly to tighten my... Uh, bolts that are hard to get to if you jam this in to the bolt in the side it acts as like the screwdriver trick well this comes in handy here and there when this is too big but it's again multiple function you have different pry bars in one um and that's about all the wrenches or all the pliers i carry with me because i don't have to carry needle noses anymore because these are my needle noses so that's all that i carry in there and let's move on i haven't opened this one yet because i broke my old one this right angle screwdriver these things are great to get in tight areas buy like three of these leave one in the shop leave two in the shop and one in your tool bag and then you have a spare for when your shop one breaks or your tool bag one breaks these are awesome um, also you can get a quarter inch adapter and you can make it into a little quarter inch. I don't recommend breaking stuff loose, but once you break it loose with like a wrench and I don't carry ratchet wrenches, you can put it on here and away you go. Um, these are from Har um, Am Amazon. These are decent quality, uh, Allen's metric and standard and uh, torques, but they're also safety torques. I carry those. I carry spares. There's that quarter inch I was telling you about. Um, I carry spare. There's actually two quarter inch there. Or, yeah. And I carry spare for my right angle. And also, I carry a screwdriver like this. Why? Because now... You don't have to carry all of these. You only carry this and this and this. But to have that many screwdrivers packed away in here, that's not a good time. Um, I carry one pick. And th this is from Harbor Freight. I like this style. 90 and straight. When this thing breaks or bends, I throw it away. And I just pick up usually these. Whenever I go to Harbor Freight, I at least buy one pack. Um, so that's that. And then, um, on to the miscellaneous. These bags are nice because they're, they're marked. So if somebody doesn't know your own setup, people, you can tell people, hey, go grab my tool bag. They don't have to say, hey, where's your pliers? If they can read, pliers, wrenches, sockets, um, miscellaneous tools, and specialty tools. Again, carry stuff that multi-purpose. This is a Milwaukee. Maybe you could find this thing cheaper. I don't know. I saw it at Home Depot, I think. I'm like, hey, that's really cool. Well, we just used it this week. We had a tree down in front of us, and I've actually got to clean this up because, oh, pressing the wrong button, sorry. Um, there you go. He got a saw, but 
folds. It's supposed to fold all the way down, but it won't. Um, and I've got to clean it because it will lock in different positions. I mostly just keep it right there, but that one's for wood. If you get like, I've seen it where you get um, uh, a piece of tree stuck up in your, well, we have that problem here on the East Coast. Uh, a tree stuck up in between your link and it's about to like take out your shock. Well, if it's all jammed up in there, instead of ripping in the tearing, um, you can just cut it out. So that's that one. Well, I also carry a fine tooth metal one. If you have to cut metal or we actually use this on um, my hydraulic line. When I broke a hydraulic line, and we'll get to that in a minute, but it will cut through it. It sucked, but hey, it's better than nothing. Um, but again, the whole purpose I'm trying to get across here is carry stuff that has multi purposes. Um, I carry a punch and a chisel. Never know when you need them. I also don't carry a big hammer. If you watch my YouTube video of Harbor Freight Tools Must Have, this little hammer right here is usually more than enough. Um, and these things, I beat the ever living tar out of them, and I haven't had one come apart yet. So I really like these things, and if you're hitting, I mean, it's, how hard do you wanna hit this with your hand there? Um, I also don't know where I got this from. Um, I carry an Allen key for my upper, uh, uh, a bigger Allen key for my ball joint deletes and I carry a socket for it. Um, I don't know where I got this from, but it's literally like four files in one. Um, or it might be one and one, but two files. This one's more for like aluminum. This one's more for steel. And this thing's come in handy. Again, if you've gotten it by now, multi-purpose or multi-use, I should say. Um, that's that. I carry a pair of gloves with me. And I carry, go to Harbor Freight. When you're at Harbor Freight, buy these four-pack microfibers. Stick them somewhere in your buggy. You will thank me if there's a creek nearby after you're wrenching on your junk in scenic locations because why work in a shop? You can wipe off your hands and they're cheap. They're only like a dollar now. They used to be give me, but Harbor Freight's gotten greedy. But uh, that's that. Now, I need to buy a new tool bag again because this one kind of melted. But this is my effort bag. I'll probably get kicked off of YouTube for you can use your imagine. When shit hits the fan, this is your savior. This is most of the stuff to F the buggy back together to get it off the trail or fix it. Let's use the F word as fix it. No pun intended. So, this is spare belt. This is the electrical section. All spare electrical inline fuses, butt connectors, and when I get it back here, I put Deutsch connectors back in it. Spare wire. Uh, I use these for my vents. I use air brake hose and quick fittings because it's easy. Spare quick fittings and air brake hose. And there, some tape. I'll, I have tape all over these bags. Um, next up still covering actually trail hero sand look at that on the east coast more zip ties more tape more wire i've got to put another one in there but spare ls problem they say ls is easy well a lot of people burn spark plug wires i usually don't have a problem with this but i carry at least two um i gave one to a buddy um so i need to put another one in there but spare LS wire. Um, then in this, this pocket, I've got spare uh, U-bolts, 1350s. Now, just in case, um, 
I have a spare upper ball joint delete bolt. I have spare with spare washers for my steering ram tie rod ends. This is no good. Well, this isn't good to you if you're out in the sand or out in the mud and you drop one of those spacers for your, and you know what I'm talking about, the spacers for your full hydro ram that goes in between. Well, I put a spare set on this. A um, couple of different spare link bolts with uh, just a random spacer if I need it. A couple spare washers if I need it. Um, spare clip for my granite shaft at the end. Um, and just a bunch of spare miscellaneous nuts and bolts. Um, I try to keep it simple. Um, I've also learned you can sometimes sparingly steal a bolt from somewhere else on the buggy. Um, my buddy went to shake his rig down last week, uh, two weekends ago. You'll see the video, uh, the video post a while ago. But he lost two bolts in his steering wheel to the quick disconnect. We pulled him out of his floor, stuck him in his steering wheel. He was good all day. Um, this is basically plugs for uh, for AM stuff, AM plugs. And usually I have fit-ins in there, which when I get a new bag, this will have a couple straight fit-ins in it. Um, uh, Hose barb to dash 16 in case you have to fix it. Um, this is actually what we cut with that. Um, I guess I never cleaned the trash out of it. It actually snapped off there. So those are actually garbage, but I carry field serviceable ends with a union. If I really damage a hose, lucky enough that was just the end and I had enough, I could put uh, another one on. Um, but I have field service pull ends in here and I do have one dash six Actually, I do have two dash six in here. So my trans lines and my fuel lines are all dash six So if I break something I can literally plumb it back together like this and create a splice um, So that's Everything in there and now I want to talk to you about preventative maintenance basically preventative maintenance um, I cross check all my bolts and if you don't know what this stuff is it's a godsend. Have you ever tried to nut and bolt your car? Most of you don't because it's a pain going through every nut, bolt, and everything. Well, do yourself a favor, order a bunch of pizza, get some beer if that's your thing, and invite your friends over and when they get there, like, hey, guess what we're doing? We're nut and bolting the car. Well, when you do nut and bolt it, you put cross check on it. The reason is, even somebody that's not into cars or off-roading they see this neon orange green whatever color tickles you you can put on your car and they're like hey those two don't line up oh my bolt came loose um i personally try not to lock tight some stuff just for the simple fact if i needed to take it apart in the woods and i don't have a torch with me to heat it up or it's really a pain to take apart I might use blue Loctite on stuff, but I mostly use cross check. And the cross check will tell you what is uh, loose and what's still staying tight. If this stuff keeps on breaking the seal, it basically dries like a wax. It comes out like, like almost like, I don't know, RTV kind of, but it dries more of a wax. If this keeps on breaking the seal of the two that you dot and dot, then yeah, you should probably lock tight that. And final thing on the list, I'll actually come to the front of the table so you can see. This is my checklist.
and I will start selling these if anybody is interested in the comments. Drop it in the comments. Basically, you have your undercarriage, your interior, your transmission, drivetrain, all that stuff, and your fluids. And at the top, what does that say? Use cross-check paint. Well, this is now your checklist. And instead of checking every one of the nuts and bolts on your car whenever you go out, which is a pain, you just have to get one buddy over here, look at it. If any of the cross-check is seals broken, tighten it, re-cross-check it, and like the front axle, you just go up to it, brakes look good, the rotors don't feel too messed up, lug nuts, um, basically I usually just check one or two, if they're tight, then I don't check all of them. If they're not tight, then I retorque all of them. Um, and same thing, rear axles, mirrors the front. Subframe, you just look for disformed tubes, all that kind of stuff. Um, one thing I did forget to mention, I do carry a spare 1350U joint. I don't carry spare axle U joints, but I have ran into a problem where I spit a cap out or something. So I carry a spare 1350U joint. It's currently not in here. But back to this. Interior, you just check, see if wires are chafing somewhere. Um, quickly, just like we do at truck checks for the when I'm in the fire company. You make sure all the lights and everything works good you make sure that you have your uh seats tight your seat belts tight your fire extinguisher um brakes you just check the pedal fluid that kind of thing drivetrain um once in a while i do check my converter bolts make sure they're not backing out because that is one thing if your converter bolts do back out those i do lock tight so i only check them here and there if those back out that is a bad day um engine I look at the bolt um, the belt you just rotate the belt a little bit check it for cracks if it's cracking toss it in your bag as your spare and throw a new one on there um, engine basically you just check everything I have catch can so I make sure I drain them um, and fluids you just go down it um, engine oil steering fluid blah 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 and also grease is on there for your like drive shafts and um, super joints so if you are interested in one of these let me know it does come in handy um you could have one in your trailer and one in your shop and this basically says over here shape okay or urgent notes you can add like a little note that there um and then you just check it off when it's done so if you have people with you you can even write notes in here and when it's done, somebody can just check it off. But drop in the comment if you're interested in one of these. If you made it this far, thank you. We are trying to grow our YouTube channel. And we'll uh, have lots of content coming soon. Uh, we are only 10 minutes away from most of the off-road parks here in PA now. So we are going full bore. Um, we are trying to make this YouTube thing. Uh, work so share videos like tag all that stuff and we'll catch you on the next one